Hey guys, it's Tyler and welcome to another CGS live stream. We are going to be continuing today with the Lovecraft landscape from last time. So this is part two. If you're uh, watching in the future on YouTube, go check out part one. It should be uploaded and you'll see we started with some warm-up doodles, some little uh, landscape sketches there. You get things rolling along and then we brainstormed some ideas for the composition that you're looking at here, uh, which I am feeling pretty good about so far. I like some of the ideas we've got here, the shapes, the lighting is looking pretty cool. Still got some basic stuff to set up. I have some ideas in terms of adding some shapes to the uh, foreground here. But uh, yeah, I think it's heading in a good direction. So thanks for joining me. Hope you're having a good week. And without further ado, let's jump in and do some concepting. Okay. Now we had this layer here where we were playing with some of these extra floating bits. And I do like that. We may have that. But I also wanted to play maybe with the idea that we have some kind of pillars rising up here. Let's try that and see how that feels. And I'm going to pull my navigator over here so you guys can see and be reminded of how important it is to have a nice distant view of what you're working on. So that's going to be what people notice first about your work is that distant read. Yeah, see, this is, um, my students will <laughs> probably recognize this phrase that I use, uh, the, the, uh, the streetlight effect, which is if you have, if you want to show some depth, you can use repeated elements from foreground to background and the scale change of them will help you feel that depth, right? So this, these pillars here is playing with that concept. We only have three. We could certainly maybe add another one here. I don't know. Let's try it. Might be too much. Turn down the music a little bit so you guys can hear me better. Um, interestingly enough, I'm getting kind of like a, a Stonehenge kind of quality from these. Um, Or like the the, um, the heads on Easter Island too. That's that's also giving me a bit of those vibes. See, that's kind of cool though. I kind of liking that. Let's zoom out on that live here. Yeah, I think that's pretty neat element there. We can put some cool carvings and details on there. I mean. One of the ideas I want to play with here is that this terrain might be sort of living, that uh, at least the floating rocks here, I want to have an implied sense of uh, sentience to these, and, and maybe these pillars here might also have some creepy organic elements going on. Maybe we're going to have these tentacles here below the mist around the main platform, the sort of throne dais here. So, I mean, who's to say that this wouldn't also have some weird organic qualities to it. So I think, I think we'll stick with that. I do like it. Um, this is the only one that I'm... Let's play with the shorter version. Yeah. And then maybe this one is shorter as well. Okay, that's... That's kind of neat. I 
and then because we have this we're always looking at these compositional lines and so we created this sort of diagonal like this here and we have some diagonals happening here too but maybe this element here can help reinforce that perhaps there's a bit more of a diagonal slant to this one here those are all things to be considering doesn't have to be extreme, it's just uh, one other helper uh, for the eye to feel those rhythms in the image. Before you go diving into too much detail, you want to establish how far things are and how much atmosphere you're going to be putting on those things to get them to feel like they're at the right distance. Because when you add details, those details are going to want to live within the value range you've established. If we, for example, if we were starting to do details on this pillar here and I started grabbing values from this pillar and started putting details, well, that completely doesn't make sense, right? Because we wouldn't see that value on something at this depth in the piece. So this value map that we're creating, right? This is kind of like a value map, a schematic for what values are safe to use at each depth plane in the image. And then we can safely go in and add details by sampling in that local area. And we know that it's going to feel correct in the composition overall. So we don't have that kind of workflow. And then you're going to have to do work later to uh, establish that that readability. And, uh, and it's not not my favorite workflow to be working a bit backwards, I would say. love the lasso tool, the free lasso tool for environment stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm digging that.
the eye is very perceptive to value change, so we have to be very subtle to have careful precision with those changes. Feeling like there's definitely another tentacle wanting to be in this zone right here. So let's draw one out right there. And maybe he curls like this. What would Bob Ross say? He would say this is a happy little tentacle, right? No, we probably would never hear him say that, right? That would be too funny. Yeah, see, this one's further away. Let's knock that back there. up there like we got some uh, some monsters heading our way and I like to try to work the whole piece up at the same time so we don't end up with any gaps or uh, a lack of clarity in any particular area of the image but I will say you've got to start somewhere right with the details you might as well start with the focal point and our focal point is, well, we've got, you know, this is kind of our focal point, really. Um, but this is certainly kind of part of it. So we have sort of like initial read, secondary read. Um, and then these are kind of flowing out towards us as the sort of third read. It's your tense, Glenn. You can paint it however you like. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay, I'm glad you guys are on board with this. Hey, thanks, Blay. Appreciate it. We're definitely making some progress here. This is kind of neat. This is, uh, we were really loose with that, but I like that kind of tightly coiled aspect of that one there. So let's retain that. And he's kind of tucking behind this pillar guy here so I like that interaction too and that's probably a good uh, this is a good time to note that overlap is your friend overlap creates an immediate sense of distance right because we we see that something is in front of something else and you want to be looking for opportunities to have overlap in your image you have everything not touching each other Kind of reminds me of like when you're a kid and you want all your food to be separate on your plate, right? You don't want that. <laughs> it's uh, that sort of it's it segments the image, it grids it out, it compartmentalizes it, and it removes a key tool in conveying depth. So embrace the overlap and make it clear. The worst is if you have things not overlapping, but aligning very near each other because then we, that's when we have things called tangents right where it feels like it's sort of coincidentally aligned and uh, and that that tends to not feel so hot so just things to keep an eye on as you're working on your images and i'm thinking we're going to want some more light touching the inside of this tentacles here Tentacles is the Lovecraft version of Hercules.
Now what's this guy doing here? He feels like he's got a weird shape. Let's fix you. Get in line, Mr. Cloud. There we go. <laughs> Japanese tentacles are the happiest. <laughs> well, I, I think we can say it's safe to assume what you're alluding to. If you guys have ever seen images of lightning in the sky, uh, uh, a dark, a dark sky or dark clouds, uh, it's this really cool effect, right, where you have the the brightness coming from inside the dark cloud, and it uh, kind of cuts through in these little slivers, um, and that's kind of the effect we're going for here. And and we may in fact even put some lightning shooting out of this thing. Who knows? That feels like it could be appropriate for this kind of scene, but that's that's. The general uh, inspiration here for this lighting. Little uh, eruptive breaks in the clouds. And I'm thinking this area might even get brighter than this. Let's pull that out. It's a technique I love right here, which is where you lasso a shape out, get a nice big soft brush, paint from outside the selection region. All right, so it's still selected. I've just hidden it, hitting Control H. I can see what I'm doing. And I'm painting from beyond the selection region so I can get a nice smooth gradient where I need the smoothness, but it's isolated and cut out exactly where I need to so have hard and soft edges achieved there and uh, again those edges are going to really help the piece Where you're trying to get me in trouble. Moving around the piece can also help you with fatigue, right? Because you may get a little bored of uh, painting the clouds. So noodle on them for a bit, move elsewhere. Maybe we'll move to some of these obelisks or something. But I don't think I'm tired of them yet. I'm working through some of this sketch, these sketch lines, get those out of the way because they inhibit our ability to see this tonally. So I'm just using the smudge tool to sculpt those lines out and moving in a direction that I want the clouds to be flowing in, which is sort of a, a radial sense around this focal point.
uh, base as monochrome on her painting is definitely the way to go. Yeah. Um, there are artists out there who can work in straight color and get amazing results and, and, uh, and honestly a bit more color complexity than we may get here, but I would rather get my values really solid because I know that that's key to the readability of the piece and the colors be maybe a little bit less complex. Um, that is generally what I favor. Um, Cause I'm sure you guys have seen environments where they feel flat. Uh, we don't have a sense of depth. It could be the perspective might have an issue or, or the values don't, uh, we don't have a sense of atmosphere there. And, you know, as cool as the colors would be in the piece, those issues are just, uh, you know, those kind of kill it, right? Like we can't get past that aspect. So that's why I would rather, uh, get those things working first and then you know eventually we can get some color robustness in here but I do favor those other things above all else now what's going on here is this we've been a little vague about this spot okay this is a tentacle that's kind of wrapping up in, in front here this is the challenge that you face when you introduce lots of little uh, tentacles is that there's all kinds of complexity in there curves and overlaps yeah so this is coming down here like this darkness wrapping around like that I think I'll pull this in a bit tighter here and the really funny thing is that we are painting in monochrome, but you see how we actually have slight warm and cool happening. Uh, that's just Photoshop for you. JD says, those people who paint in color on a single layer freak me out. It is, uh, it is quite fascinating to watch people who have that, that eye for juggling design, composition, value, color, all at the same time. Just really, really cool stuff. here so we're safe to push the values a little bit darker so it's getting closer to us here Sphere on top of this guy here. 
And uh, if you guys don't know, you can use the numeric keys on your keyboard uh, to control the opacity of your brush. So, you know, normally you might go up to this top little bit over here and, and adjust the slider manually. But if I hit one on the keyboard, I'll go to opacity 10. If I hit two, I'll go to 20 and so on and so forth. So if you want to apply very subtle changes, just hit that one on your keyboard. You'll be right down to 10% on that brush. And you can apply things very carefully. And, you know, the other thing about going monochrome first and then going into color is that it feels like there's a bit of a treat waiting for you later, right? Like, when you know that this grayscale all looks really good, you like the design, the composition, the values all working, and then you know, okay, uh, now I can add some cool colors to this. It's, I really like that feeling, you know, it really gets me excited for those later stages. to resolve in all the major forms of this top creature. There's this last tentacle here that was not fully defined. Let's have this just coil right behind this guy here. There we go. thing too is that if we wanted to add more tentacles behind this we could be it would be easy because we would be inserting them in a very subtle way and apply a ton of detail back behind this if we wanted to and I think we might do that Here again, just applying some subtle atmospheric tweaks to this by looking at my thumbnail, seeing does this feel like it's coming kind of towards us and out over here, feeling uh, further away here. You're still getting to know all the shortcuts. Yeah, there's a ton of them. It's, uh, I am learning new ones. Seems like every week I find some new little weird shortcut in Photoshop. And if you're watching artists work on a stream like this, and you can ask them stuff, you see them doing something, just, you know, ask a question. They'll, they'll likely be very happy to oblige and explain what it is that they're doing, even something as quick as like a hot key that they might be using that you're not familiar with. And to be honest, that's one of the first things that I think falls by the wayside with tutorials is all of those sort of muscle memory things that artists are doing that they are just uh, used to doing a million times. They don't really think about it. You know, when I'm using the hotkeys on the keyboard here, they just, I just hit them. You know, I don't really think too much about it, especially the ones I'm using all the time. So, so we may not think to say anything about it. 
that's uh, that's a bummer. But I, I tell students like you know you want to kind of get to a point with the hotkeys where you're using the keyboard like you're playing a piano. You know, it really should feel that uh, that intuitive to you. And you can squint your eyes as well as another way to see the readability of the, the larger value chunks in the piece. Now I saw this line here, and this feels like it could be one other tentacle doing a really nice sort of dynamic whipping shape over here. Let's let's roll with that. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. smudge tools. I have two main ones that I use. I have one that's very soft, diffuses things quite a bit. And then I have another one. Well, I have actually here, as you can see, I have a series of them here, but there's two that I use most often and it's smudge soft, which is again to just see, we can just completely blur out something if we want to. And then I have this smudge oily, which is, um, has a more of a specific directional component to it and it feels a bit like you're kind of moving um what kind of pushing paint around which is why i call it oily and uh that can be can feel very sculptural when you're using it i'm gonna contour this tentacle here slightly different using the liquify or handy dandy liquify tool I just move this there's kind of a curve here that I'd like to get expressed better on this left side we can see before and after just feels like it flows a bit better there and I think that's probably true of this tentacle here as well let's pull that guy in Let's do that with this. The tapering of this one here feels like it could be the nest a bit as well. Get that feeling like it's getting thinner here, fatter here. You can see the liquify is really a handy tool for this and other things, but yeah, pretty effective for what we're doing right now. some curl to this one.
seeing how dark we can go over here without it feeling uh, or without it disrupting the comp too much I think I want to push that area back Actually working on the layer behind, so that's fine. seen HP Lovecraft's Dagon. That sounds so familiar. I probably have. Hey, Natasha. Good to see you. Uh, do I ever consistently stream at other times of the day? So I have one stream for CGS here a week. Uh, it's always at the same time, so it's it's two hours long. So for, in my local time, it's from noon to 2 p.m. And um, I'm in the Pacific time zone here on the West Coast. Yeah, subtle we can be with that value and you still read it. It's just like a it's like a hidden feast for your eyes, right? You get pulled in by the higher contrast stuff, then you look further in and you're like, oh look, there's stuff happening back the back there. But again, we wouldn't be able to know what values to be using here if we hadn't established that other stuff first. In fact, let's here, I'm trying to get Slight separation in this area here. Yep. And this is going to be our process as we render this whole piece is just going in and defining more and more subtle regions, taking those major chunks of foreground, middle ground, and background, and bridging them with planes in between. That's how you get a rendered looking piece. See if we can go in here and find this area in the middle. Insert a little tentacle in here. Oops. I didn't mean to select that here. Let's try that again. Here we go. Get a tentacle right there. Hide our selection. So 
value is feeling a little weird here. And as you work on this, you'll, you'll gain clarity, right? You'll have better sense of things as you start to fill in more of the puzzle. Start with the most obvious puzzle pieces first. And that will make the mysterious puzzle pieces easier to assess. It'll be more isolated. Here I'm going to use a new layer so that I can draw a tentacle kind of doing its thing behind all this and then I'll erase parts that are going behind. like we need a tentacle right in this region here.
good to think about everything in two directions where you like to make something lighter it may be better to just darken everything around it if you consider both of those options with everything you do then you have twice the uh twice the ways of expressing something right Cool, yeah. Starting to get the layering that I want. We'll add some more in there, some more tentacles in the back there, but I wanted to make sure that we had a sense that there was stuff kind of in front of us and then things that were in behind. And I believe we're starting to get that, so that's great. about what I might want to tackle next here in terms of the additional layer of detailing. Maybe we can play with this. Uh, maybe we can do the... I help. <laughs> There's so many cool things we can work on. We can work on this throne here with the creature. Yeah, maybe we should dive into that. Start to figure out what's going on there. All right. So we've got some kind of weird, and I'm going to use just a slightly darker value to design with line a bit. silhouetted situation because of the lighting and the distance we have from this thing, but we're going to try to inject some applied shapes here that feel like there could be something creepy sitting here. I'm going to give it a smaller head because it should feel pretty massive. get a little too dark here or something in our efforts to define this creature. It's totally fine because it's easy for us to knock back this stuff. seeing like more of a feminine figure sitting here sort of sitting a bit sideways perhaps there's this throne that we're kind of slopes maybe the throne has a little armrest here something interesting forming. Yeah, 
Yeah, maybe it's some kind of weird, like, like tentacle queen of some kind or something. I mean, this is uh, this is the Lovecraft universe, man. We have a lot of freedom to do crazy stuff. I'm not sure I like what this hand is doing though. Maybe that's maybe that's gonna be kind of out here on this. like that It's good to just revert to drawing uh, if you're trying to figure out a design. Let's get some implied skull shapes going on in here. from above so we're gonna have we're gonna have to think about how that shades on the face there
Maybe the legs are just we go with like an Ursula kind of thing. I think that will feel more creature like. Yeah. I think it's definitely starting to starting to get the creepiness that I want there. Get that sort of like alluring hourglass form up here. You're like, ooh, who is that? And then you're like, oh god, wait, that's faster. Gorgon vibes? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely has kind of like a Medusa thing going on. And so, you know, we can see that values are maybe not as in line with the whole composition, but it's easy for us to just go in and add some more atmosphere back on top of this, right? We can knock that back, put her, put her at the right level of depth in the image there. and and likely boost all of the values here in terms of lighting from above.
carefully manage those values on that, make sure it feels far enough back. Okay. I like generally where that's at. I think that's uh, starting to head in the right direction there. I might increase the width of this here just a bit. We've got that, uh, that shape now that's leading us into that area. these like guardian statues I think these might have like the kind of squid mouth thing going on was an idea that they were statues, right? So I think we'll keep them statues. We'll use some colors to help with that, right? We'll keep these gray and then the lady on the throne here, we'll, we'll use some colors on her so she feels like she's kind of alive versus those two. And I was thinking about maybe these guys have they're like guardians, maybe they have some some swords that they're leaning on. some of this stuff together here. I don't think we're going to need that layer anymore. I like kind of like what we've got.
Mm, that's a tricky little area of value to manage, isn't it? Utilize some darkness in the chest area there. Pulling with some darker value here. These are those value puzzles that you create for yourself. You know, you get yourself in a spot where you may not be exactly sure what would happen in terms of lighting. And you may also not be sure how to set up the lighting to get the forms to read the way you need them to. That's why you just try to do the stuff that's obvious first. Hey, Tony, welcome in. How you doing? I may cheat a little bit right there and have some of that light coming through and hitting the edge of the hand here just so we can get that separating a bit. Just don't tell anybody, all right?
Maybe these guys need some horns too. Let's let's do that. I want this guy's head to feel just a little smaller so his body feels more massive. So we're going to use the liquify uh, pucker tool here to just kind of bring that in. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Playing some D and D rad work. Oh, thanks. Appreciate that. What uh, what kind of character are you playing in your uh, D and D campaign? Or are you the uh, the dungeon master?
Backlighting is really fun. It looks really cool, but it's uh, challenging to do the to get the forms to read on the shadow side, right? Because there's this very subtle situation going on there. Unless you have a lot of bounce light or some other light coming in. But in this case, we have basically one main directional light. So uh, it's going to be careful about that shadow side. But um, yeah, it tends to be a cool read because you get that really nice silhouette on the back there. statues maybe they're just uh chilling there guarding this this uh this queen girl here hmm. i don't know undecided we'll play that by ear maybe we'll change our mind at some point make sure that's in perspective though it's leaning away from us and this actually wants to be tilted the other way doesn't it i wasn't really paying attention too much when i did that well actually wait 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 let's see which feels right for that. Now, oh, maybe it's not that tilted. Yeah, actually, just a slight tilt, I think, works for that guy. Yeah, yeah, let's go with that. This, this piece right here is just feeling really, really inappropriate. That's such a strong word. Um, <laughs> this feels like it needs to have its value adjusted a bit. There we go, yeah. Maybe there's a little pillar kind of like here poking up just to kind of keep the flow. Keep your eye moving through the design. I think this lighting puzzle is starting to become more and more clear to us, right? It's becoming easier for us to see when our, uh, when our values are not fitting in with the scheme of the scene here. You're DMing, actually, but it's always slow while people decide what they want to do. <laughs> I bet. Hey, G. Hendrix. Oh, thanks. Appreciate that. Glad you could uh, stop by the stream here. How's your day going so far? excited about some of these tentacle choices here on the bottom of this guy, but I think maybe we'll do something like that. Let's have this sword drop sort of in between, in betwixt the tentacles. These right here, yeah. Is this a situation where I should be lightening this back arm because it's further away? I mean, that makes sense, right? Just want to make sure we're reading it properly. Let's just, uh... okay, yeah, I think we can get away with just a little value adjustment there.
maybe I was mentioning Easter Island before with these pillars. I mean, maybe we do just put weird faces in them or something. Maybe they're like cycloptic faces, like they got like one big creepy eye. That would definitely be striking, right? And get our attention. I mean, let's be clear. No one would want to go to this place, right? <laughs> no sane person. There. This looks like a disaster waiting to happen. Um, but I don't know. Maybe the narrative requires the person venture here for whatever reason, as dubious as that might be. sure how I feel about this, uh, this pillar right here. Let's see if we get rid of it, what it looks like. No, I do like it there. Kind of just fills it in. Maybe we need to have some other ones. Maybe it needs to be a bit smaller. One thing is for certain, the value range we're working with back here is uh, very precarious. some of these extraneous doodle lines so we can have as much clarity as we can on where we're headed here. Long day at work today, but you're happy to get home and do some art? Yeah, that is always a good feeling. Just dive into your, your creative space, your safe creative space.
<laughs> the value range back here is just ridiculous. Gotta be so careful. This tentacle wants to be pushed further back here. It's coming, it's closer to us here, and then it kind of coils back. Starting to get a feel for this this dude on the right here. At the beginning, you want to be focused on that gesture and the, the silhouette, right? And the tentacles can be doing whatever we want, so there's a lot of freedom there. That freedom comes great responsibility to uh, think about the big shapes. Graphically, you know, you guys ever want to see art that's very good about being graphic? Look at uh, JC Line Decker's work, just amazing. Also, when you're even though these figures are far away and their details are not super specific um it really helps to know anatomy right because i'm i'm hitting kind of these major planes and we have to ge know generally where those planes are going to fall so if you're if you're not familiar with that stuff that will make this job very very difficult for you just comes down to deciding you know where do you want those uh lighting planes to break based on uh, direction right like do we have the lower back here kind of seat into shadow or does that stay in light i think we want to kind of duck it into shadow so we have the upper back in light and it ducks into shadow then the glutes which will basically be tentacles here in this case kind of come back into the light So their arm suggested back here. I think that's good. Tentacles looking a little out of place there. Let me introduce a little negative space here. So fill in what you know first, fill in the obvious stuff.
kind of look like they have uh, like they're trees right yeah it's kind of root like quality which I think is kind of neat I feel like they're pretty planted in their stance right there guardians of this situation here Maybe we won't show. Yeah, I think I like how that's feeling. Let's lower this hilt a bit here. Let's get some cool shapes on it like we have on the dude on the left here. What do we do? We did kind of like a spiky thing. intensify our lighting on this situation here just a bit because it's going to be brighter here than any place else really I mean except for maybe the very pinnacle of this area right here perhaps even a beam or two coming out of that
and we will have plenty of fun doing all these rocky surfaces. That's uh, that's the easy part. <laughs> it's getting the overall comp figured out, getting the lighting to feel good, getting these these figurines, uh, anatomical elements in here. Feeling right? That's that's the stuff that's more challenging. So we're doing that first, or at least we're getting a good um, good amount of it in there, blocked in, and uh, yeah, I think it's definitely starting to come together we're getting a sense for where this is headed and i think next time what we'll do is we'll uh we'll make sure we hit these uh these weird uh pillars that we put on the right here i think we're going to introduce some kind of easter island inspired uh faces but probably cycloptic so they feel kind of weird and monstrous maybe maybe they're stone on the top and then they're sort of tentacle based coming out of the bottom here. Maybe there's some tentacles kind of writhing up through them. I think we got a lot of opportunities to do something neat there. And so we'll definitely hit that next time. But our overall goal here is to get these values feeling pretty solid uh, before we bring in colors, because then we know that everything is reading well and uh, the depth is there. Our designs are locked in and uh, coloring is gonna just be that icing on the cake really. So with that, I think we can call it here, but I want to thank everybody for joining me. I hope you had fun just hanging out, watching this thing uh, coming together slowly here. And uh, just remind you to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, hit the, hit the bell, get all those notifications, because we got all kinds of cool content all throughout the week here on the channel. Different mentors doing concept art, animation, modeling, game dev talk. Uh, you know, this is, uh, our school has all kinds of different disciplines related to uh, game and film development. So that's stuff we feature here on the channel all throughout the week. So it's, it's cool stuff. Um, so yeah, check it out. And uh, if you're interested in some of my own personal work, you can find me on Instagram. It's probably one of the better places to find me. Uh, and it's uh, at art of Ty, A-R-T-O-F-T-Y. All right. So thanks again, guys. Have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.